Welcome, Ghost, back to Bullet Catcher Gaming. This is why mission design matters. We've got a podcast coming up, which is going to be all about the video we made a little while ago about things you don't want to see in the next Ghost Recon. Keep an eye out for that one. Um, it's kind of a feedback video uh, where we discuss all the points that were raised in the comments. Big thank you to Your Inner Wolf for the work that he did on the intro uh, that you may have seen at the beginning of this video and the last few. Um, his uh, description and uh, details are going to be in the description below. So if anyone ever needs to contact him for any work or anything like that, you can. Um, and also to Kiri and Grimm for the awesome thumbnail image. Now, I thought we would talk about mission design today. So why it's so important to get this part of the next game right. So we know from the leaks that there's probably going to be a new game. Um, but what do we want or what do we require in terms of mission design in a new title? As always, obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts um, in the comments below. So Ghost Recon Wildlands, I think, had a good array of mission types and variety and a large number of missions in total, which overall didn't feel particularly repetitive. Um, Breakpoint, however, suffered from a lot of kind of go here, get that, shoot some bad guys, then go there go and speak to this person, then go get that, come back, those type of scenarios. And I think um, those missions as well were kind of fewer in number compared to Wildlands, um, you know, a bit short, uh, with the added annoyance of kind of always feeling like you had to kind of talk to an NPC and kind of travel, you know, across the other side of the map sometimes to talk to another NPC, only have to travel all the way back again just to speak to the very same NPC you started with. And we wonder why Nomad always sounded grumpy. Now, I'm not digging uh, Breakpoint here because I love Breakpoint. I genuinely do. Um, but I also think it's okay for something that you love um, to rib it a little bit and, you know, kind of be, you know, have some criticism for it. I think that's only fair for the things that you're really interested in, things that you love. So, you know, I'm not going over too too overboard, but, you know, it's, it's fair. It's fair game. Um but, we, I mean, we've seen other titles over the years, for example, heavily influence their mission design um, based from kind of scenes from movies, which can definitely work if it's blended well into the overall story narrative. Um, though I don't want to see the entire story of, like, say, 13 Hours or Tears of the Sun broken down into Ghost Recon story missions. Though I do enjoy both of these movies and many others in the genre, I think they should remain as influence only. Another important factor into mission design is, of course, the overall story that's being told. Um, that obviously, we'd, we'd like a deep, engaging and preferably good story to sink our teeth into. This is not always the case. Obviously, a good story uh, can still have poorly constructed missions. And of course, the opposite also exists, wherein you can have an interesting mission design within a weak story narrative. So ideally... We want a story which helps develop the characters within it, make you care about the actions you take and the people in the game, whilst expanding the lore of Ghost Recon with a satisfying ending that can also be expanded upon with DLC. Let's let's not have a narrative of, uh, you know, doing this solo nomad like before. You're on your own, you know, as you stand around in Erewhon with 30 other operators huddled around you being told the same thing. So what makes good mission design? Uh, what is needed to kind of make you feel that you've completed the current mission and you've achieved something or you've maybe learned something or, you know, helped you improve how to play the game and move forward or, or grab intel for another mission or things like that. Obviously, plenty of other factors exist before mission design can feel gratifying. A good mission can be wrecked by terrible AI enemies, for example. Even poor buildings or a lackluster kind of overall world design can ruin a good mission experience. Some games go, some games go about rewarding you with unlocks for mission progress, for example, but then kind of give you things that will you know will require you know you require later on in the game for other missions i'm perfectly fine with this but it it doesn't always work in an open world game as you know we expect the next ghost recon to be i mean there's no evidence or anything in the minor leaks that we've had but we're presuming that it's going to be open world so open world games obviously can still reward you based off your mission rewards 
but they tend to kind of go with things that will make you more of a badass with like improved equipment and the like. Wildlands, for example, did a good job with complete emissions in whatever order you wanted in a region to unlock the bosses for that area, which I think worked really well. Motherland obviously did that too in a smaller scale. Wildlands didn't uh, didn't really kind of they gave you equipment that was it, they didn't give you equipment that was imperative to have. You didn't need it to complete later missions or harder missions. They just kind of gave you things to make your character stronger and react quicker. Effectively an advantage over, say, larger numbers of AI enemies that you'd face as you kind of move through the bosses. And I, for one, personally really like this. Um, the more freedom to, you know, complete missions in the order you want and how you want, with as many gameplay options you can have, is always a plus in my books instead of always relying on the key that will open the door later type mission design. Players seem to have a strong affinity with mission success having an impact either on a specific region or in the overall story itself. You destroy this here and that will affect something over there. I believe this narrative should be the norm. When you hit a base, raise the alarm, then nearby bases in the region should at the very least be on alert. If you go into a base all guns blazing, the enemy should not stop looking for you just because you're hiding behind a box. So, overall mission design. I believe what the players want are stakes. If there are no stakes, then people lose interest quickly. I have thousands of hours on Breakpoint, um, and most of the missions I don't really care to replay because they're just too generic for my liking. There were some very good ones, and some with interesting ideas, but they were just a bit they just weren't executed properly, in my opinion. But overall, I'd say that they were they were at least fairly dull, I think, compared to Wildlands. I mean, there are, of course, many ways to create stakes, and I'm not saying that Wildlands missions were full of those stakes, because they weren't. But what they did had, as I said, better, as I said earlier, was better variety. Give me variety with something at stake, and you have a great mission design template. SOCOM, for example, raised stakes by having your AI able to be killed within any given mission. Delta Force, Black Hawk Down, old school one there, um, had a mission design at night to try and get through the city with very limited ammo, so you had to choose your targets carefully and avoid others to reach extraction. Many games, whether it's Tarkov, Armour, or even Rainbow Six Siege, um, though different in nature, they have stakes that control the narrative of the gameplay. And we don't have much of that in Ghost Recon mission design. It's normally just failure to do this in time or death. Where is the creation of urgency in a situation or, you know, or care to keep a character alive? You know, missions could make you purposely conserve ammo sometimes or switch to single shot because you know that this one mission will be difficult and challenging with no opportunity to get more pickups. Perhaps you have to deal with loss of equipment forcing you to react to things in real time, on enemies in real time, to, you know, they're unable to scan the area or look for enemy locations with your drone. A jumbled confusion as you chase down a high-value target in a massively populated area, knowing that one stray bullet hitting a civilian will end your mission. You know, adding a timer to missions is, is not really what I mean either, because lots of companies seem to think that that's you add a timer and it adds tension. That's not always the case. Um, though, you know, maybe important very occasionally in, say, a meeting deadline for a hostage extraction, you know, they don't need, I don't need to see it utilised six or seven times in one game, and that's what we've seen in the past. Timers can actually add a deep level of frustration, especially if there are minor bugs or glitches within the open world, which actually hinder your advance. Wildlands had that great mission added later in its release called um, Snafu where you were defending the truck whilst the bomb was being defused and you had the um, like enemies coming at you from every angle. The first time you play this, then yeah, it, it did feel challenging because it's new, um, you know, and it was kind of unknown. But after that one time when you realise you can sit in a building next to an ammo resupply and waste everyone with infinite 203 grenade rounds, it ruins an effectively great mission. Up the stakes, remove the ammo boxes in that town or have one far enough away from the bomb defusal that you have a dangerous path down, say, winding alleyways to get to it, ducking snipers to try and reach it successfully. 
This will make you more tactical. It's going to, you know, make you conserve ammo, pick targets out more carefully. You know, that ammo box is now just could be too much of a risk to get to. And of course, you won't be able to defend the bomb either whilst you're gone, leaving it exposed to the enemy. Tactical is pretty much, after all, though, is what we want, right? In a Ghost Recon game, I'm feel free to disagree. That's what I want. Um, mission design, you know, can't just be fixed by, you know, adding difficulty or, or like I just said, just removing an ammo box, you know, here or there. It needs structure. It needs to know what it wants to do, you know, within a multiple kind of pathway structure, give you the freedom to do it how you wish with failure and success impacting the story missions moving forward. A mission plan has been mentioned in the community. I've seen it quite a bit, and this is a good idea. So you can choose your infill, exfills, and work out how you intend to maneuver around the, you know, a base or a specific area. Though this doesn't really have any direct impact on the mission design itself, but would still be a nice added feature, I think, to improve the overall mission experience. We know many games copy, copy aspects of other games in order to kind of Oh, you know, jump on a trend or, well, yeah, we know games do that. I mean, here's looking at you, Frontline. Um, or try and improve the gameplay or, you know, maybe even to bring in a bigger audience. You know, all games do this, whether it's right or wrong. But in my opinion, Ghost Recon can still be its own thing without having to copy and paste game styles or mission designs from other titles. You know, Ghost Recon does not need Rainbow Six or Splinter Cell or any of those other types of titles to, to hold it up. It can succeed on its own. Emphasis on equipment probably shouldn't be overlooked either. If you're required to destroy three targets in a mission, be it vehicles or small structures, you know, start in a mission with five lots of C4, 10 types of grenades, you know, multiple rocket launchers and other explosive devices does not exactly kind of warrant much of a challenge. If you must destroy targets, then make them only destructive with certain high damage explosives for which you, I don't know, can't carry too many. You just can't carry that many, you know, making sure they're in that you do not waste any on the way and immediately creating stakes, though very simple in nature. It's added a dy dynamic that otherwise would have just made it far too easy to complete. Let's have side missions that actually feed the main story or even tease future DLCs instead of go help this man with his fishing or the usual go there get that bring it back over here or go and speak to this person you know basically don't waste your side missions on things that have no relevance do i mind a fun pirate treasure hunt or a yeti finding experience no not at all actually but build those experiences into the open world with clues and maybe button prompts instead in unexplored areas until you reach like a fun final payoff at the end. But make it within the open world and don't waste actual missions on these. Especially when your story is lacking substance. I mean, Breakpoint had time for a pirate mission, but not to finish some of the actual story beats of the main overall story. This doesn't make any sense. Whilst in mission cutscenes, you know, they'd seem to flow pretty well within Wildlands, but... Breakpoints were just kind of immersion breaking and, to be honest, dull. You know, Uncharted's a third person game that blends its cutscene seamlessly into story, and Modern Warfare did it nicely too. So let's have a bit of that for our missions in the next Ghost Recon. So missions need a purpose. You know, a random civilian asking you to go help out with something down the road for you to arrive, kill some bad guys, free some people, go back to the random civilian for a thank you and see you later. Does what for the story? Nothing. Once again, where are the stakes? Where's the character development? You know, you should be able to do things like that in the game. Yes, of course. But interactions on the way to missions, not the mission itself. Background scenarios like the Yeti I mentioned, they're fine. You know, involving the story within the living open world, but don't waste missions on these smaller things. You know, the person being held hostage in that scenario I just gave should be important to the story arc. They should have something you need to drive the story to gain access to something or something that you couldn't get before or to, to help you with a, a later mission. It needs to start serve the story. So like good movies, you know, good books and good games tell a strong and structured story. 
you know, books have chapters similar to a way in how a game may play out in, you know, separate missions until they reach a final conclusion. Movies too, but, you know, a good movie doesn't waste time. It should move a plot forward. Games should work like that too, to a degree. Obviously, in an open world, it's slightly different. You need things to keep you occupied, but it still needs a good plot. In a movie like Black Hawk Down, when the convoy first arrives back at base during the middle of the firefight, we didn't spend time with the soldiers who grabbed some food in the mess hall to get their energy levels back up so they could go back out. In real life, this was massively important because the soldiers would have been fatigued. In a movie, however, where you're telling a story with good pacing and focusing on the bravery and difficult situation the soldiers were in, that's not needed. Only that they obviously came back and then later went back out. So we don't need pointless filler in our favourite franchises or games either. We want every interaction to actually mean something and to move a plot forward. Now, obviously, I could go on for hours about this. I really could. But, you know, I'm going to wrap it up to a degree and finish with the core elements in gameplay here. The actual missions themselves. You know, I have taken so many vehicles from one location and dropped them off at another in Breakpoint. I literally sometimes wonder whether I'm a tier one operator or an Uber driver. Like, vehicles are important in an open world, but, you know, not this important. Though I have to literally steal one pretty much every day. You know, if you have to take one, then make it part of the story arc. Add some importance to it. You know, make it that you can't be discovered. Make it that you have to take a difficult path, not you can't use the roads. You've got to go across dangerous terrain and you've got to make sure that the vehicle survives the mission. It doesn't get too damaged, you know, or you still want to infiltrate a base with it and then not get caught and then escape in the same vehicle. Just add some more stakes in having to take it and don't just take it because, you know, an NPC needs it for, well, reasons. You know, no more defending computer downloads and... You know, let's defend some, you know, some civilians escaping a hostage situation, having to constantly stop to suppress the enemy forces chasing you, having to extract them across rivers and harsh terrain. Let's stop with the constant rinse and repeat and look at ways to incorporate actual missions tier one operators would carry out. You know, let's conduct some intel gathering, you know, side missions maybe to unlock main missions covert close target recce's of locations or targets, strike and capture missions, assassination missions, maybe supporting quick reaction forces in the area, defending downed helicopters or hostage rescue missions, extracting fallen comrades, falling, you know, calling in maybe fire support on targets, you could have sabotaging enemy assets, deploying kind of psyops subversion, joint operations with local forces, diversion missions, and even things like sensitive data retrieval. And yes, we've seen some of those kind of variations of mission types before, but in kind of a really such a straightforward way that it ends up still being go there, do that, then come back to your bivouac for some goat ball soup and sit on your log until your ass goes numb. Let's add tension and drama to each mission. You know, with a fear factor of death and multiple options available on how to navigate them successfully. You know, take some of the stress from ghost mode and mix it with the kind of dramatic effect of fallen ghosts, which had fairly simplistic missions made incredible by the pouring rain and atmosphere. If you extract a high value target alive, you should receive better intel on future missions than if you kill them where maybe you'd only be given very minor intel that you've retrieved. Have mission objectives that have an effect on other missions and progress. Getting spotted in a specific region puts the bases on alert, making your missions in that region much harder to complete. Really simplistic stuff. Let's have consequences to your actions. So it was supposed to be a video and you might think that sounded like a mini rant. Maybe it was a mini rant. I'm not sure. But... Tell us what you think. Let us know. I really want to know what you want from the mission design in the new game. Chuck it in the comments below. We'll read, I'll reply, and we'll discuss. Thank you so much for watching. Massively appreciate it. 
Love every single one of you. Thank you. Take care. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.